Hey everybody. I just finished watching Teen Beach 2. It's a Disney Channel uh, original movie. Now on Disney Plus. And in case you haven't already wondered, this is my, this is day 20 of my Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. And uh, the fates have chosen, as we saw yesterday at the end of the last video, Teen Beach 2. And uh, <laughs> it's the kind of things that I realize that are not generally meant for me. Um, there's a lot of content on here, obviously, that's meant for kids, not meant for a man my age. Um, but I will be the first one to admit that appearances are deceiving. I, I actually really like this movie. I'm not even like halfway going, oh, I kind of liked it. It's all right. But it's, I actually really liked it. Um, yeah, I went in with a few prejudices, prejudices and little preconceived notions about what this would be. Uh, again, I, I'm used to children's programming to be the lowest common denominator of entertainment. Uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where, you know, we have mature adult you know, fair that we we see in the theaters, or we, you know, we watch an HBO, and then we get stuff that you know, shuffle off to the kids, and hopefully they'll just enjoy their just inconsequential garbage television. In some cases, it's you know, it's not like people try to work toward someday I will make a Disney movie uh, that's just going to appear in the Disney Channel. That was, this is usually not a, the height of somebody's career, you know, whether they're behind the camera or in front of it. It's usually a stepping stone to hopefully motion pictures or something, you know, that everyone can see and is highly acclaimed. And it's not just seen by 12 year olds. Well, um, I would have never seen this movie if not for Disney Plus. I would have never tried to see it. I, Teen Beach 2 just seems like the, the lowest deconstruction of a, of a, of a movie title or concept as you can possibly imagine. And everything I thought about this movie, it was actually very wrong. So, <laughs> okay, first of all, yes, this is the era parent to the high school musical era uh, that exists, you know, has existed, that gave us uh, Zac Efron's and the Vanessa Hudgensons and, and uh, Yes, these, the two lead characters we see, actually there's four lead characters, as you can see on the screen there. They're all little, sort of, it seems like they're photocopies of Vanessa and Zach. Uh, sorry to the actors, because uh, honestly, you're all great. Uh, I'm sure you're all watching this, but uh, <laughs> you care about the opinion of somebody like me. But... The point is, is that when they cast these things, they go with the things that they figure the kids will feel most familiar with. You know, that they're going to, they're going to, oh, that girl looks a lot like Vanessa. Oh, he's as hunky as Zach. So, yeah, you're going to get those kind of things uh, normally with this kind of programming. And honestly, it works. Each of these these actors, these four that you see right here, are extremely talented. And yes, they're not teenagers, so I don't feel as creepy as I originally thought I was going to feel. Because I looked it up, and yeah, they're all they're either all in their twenties when they filmed this. This came out in two thousand fifteen, by the way. They're all in their twenties. They just look young. Some of the uh, supporting actors are in their thirties, and they all look young. Uh, but. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm not so much, I don't feel so, so much of a creep, uh, from watching this, uh, cause the young ladies are very pretty and the guys, they're easy on the eyes. I can understand, uh, why the, the kids, the girls and the boys might find them handsome. But, uh, <laughs> what surprised me is the story also, not just the talent and the, it's, uh, yes, they're singing and dancing. There's lots of singing and dancing, fun songs, but there's a supernatural element to this movie. Again, I have not seen Teen Beach, the movie, the first one, uh, and I don't know much more about this. Maybe it was a series or something else, but it's a movie. Um, apparently what happened in the first movie, and I'm going to, this is just a, a guess, a rough 
uh, a rough idea uh, based on what happened in this movie. Um, our two main characters, let's see, are Brady and Mackenzie, Brady and Mac. The, they decide, they, they fall in love apparently after going surfing or something, and then they end up in a 1960s retro beach, bing, beach blanket bingo type movie. Something that Annette Funicello showed up in, and you Disney fans should know who that is. Uh, but yeah, but it's it's definitely a 1960s era type setting. But these modern kids get thrown back into that era, and uh, and apparently they sing and dance their way, um, and fall in love throughout the movie, and and then they come back to modern times. That's all the precursor. Uh, we come into this movie with them, with their summer ending, after spending the summer together and in love. And now they're going to see what they're, each other's like, even though they went to the same school. And I'm guessing this is Hawaii. Uh, and Because and, they all seem to live on... There's Everybody's always at the beach. And Brady, the, the boy, he has a uh, his own beach house, little bungalow, separate from his parents' house, that is like inches, like is literally on the beach. And he keeps all this expensive recording equipment that he does when he records music or his computer sitting straight out on the patio. This, this beach bungalow is bigger than my apartment. It feels like it anyway. Um, so apparently he's the rich white kid in Hawaii who sings and dances. And she is too. Uh, I don't know about her house, but anyway, they start to go back to school and they realize that they're very different people. She's very conscientious and busy with uh, science and helping the environment and doing all this stuff. He just likes to chill and hang out, but he has a secret. He likes to make surfboards and invent, but he thinks that'll change the way she looks at him. It's, you know, yes, it's it's a bit contrived in that sense, but it's a, it's a, it's a logical thing. It just it moves the story along. Uh, but what happens is that she loses a necklace that the 1960s, her 1960s, 1962 counterpart. This exactly takes place in 1962. They're, they're, uh, that they, I guess the last movie took place in 1962. But inside a beach blanket bingo type movie, again, it didn't, it's not real world. It's not the real world. Well, she loses the necklace. Somehow the couple, uh, which are, uh, Layla and Tanner, Layla and Tanner, they find the necklace and then they, find their way to the modern times, much to the surprise of, of Brady and Mac. And uh, Brady and Mac are on the outs at this point, shortly into the film, because of uh, because of just conflicts and stress in their, their relationship. They're not who they thought they were. They're hiding things from each other. At least Brady is. So <laughs> the whole premise of, the, of the, the film here is to somehow figure out how and why their 1960s movie friends are somehow in the modern day, and it's a lot of goofy fun as they try to fit into the modern day. No matter what they do, they are still very 1960s fake movie characters. Um, Tanner, especially, the guy who plays Tanner, he, he's he got a... Again, he's probably in his 30s by now, um, but he still looks young. He's hilarious, there's great uh, physical comedy throughout all of this. Uh, he's he's just a complete dunderhead. And, uh... Right, come on, come back. He's a complete dunderhead. Um, he's, he, he's not very bright, but he's hilarious to watch. Um, everybody's, again, singing and dancing their way through this thing. And they're aware that, by the way, that it's, it's sort of a, an understanding that, hey... Um, singing and dancing is what they do to solve problems in their in their fake 1960-1962 world. Um, one of the also great things is their supporting cast from 1962. I'm guessing they ported them over from the first film as well. They kept them around. They, they discover that, uh, well, you know what? I don't want to ruin it for you. I don't want to ruin it for you. There, this is very much a sort of a pseudo-Back to the Future suit kind of situation here if that didn't give away the problem that's going to happen as a result of them being in the real world um 
but it's a fish out of water t tale as well for them. I guess probably the opposite of what it was for our main characters who went back to the 60s for that time. I haven't watched Teen Movie. I'm, if it turns up in the cycle at some point, I will actually eagerly anticipate uh, watching that. So, big surprise, for me especially, that I really like Be Teen Beach 2. The worst title, I think, the most... It's not very well described, but I think it's easy enough to make kids go... If it was any, any more complicated, it would make little kids go, well, what is this about? I don't understand. But it's got teens, it's got the beach, and it's the second one. So, hey, you could do a whole lot worse. Uh, there's plenty of stuff. If you're if you're an older parent and you wanted to watch this and you've seen your share of Annette Finicello and beach blanket bingo type movies, or grandparents, I should say, in some cases. Uh, if you've seen those kind of movies, you'll get a kick out of some of the references and some of the, the attitudes. But watch the first one. I haven't watched it yet, but you go ahead and watch that first one. And the second one uh, should make even more sense to you and have you should enjoy it. So I've spent a lot of time on this, uh, but ugh, it's worth it. <laughs> I feel, again, this is, a, I've learned my lesson in making, having expectations or, of letting my preconceived notions get the best of me and, and thinking that, oh, I know this is going to be garbage. What a waste of time. And I kind of planned on sort of watching in the background while I did other stuff, like cleaning or whatever. But nope, it drew me in and I enjoyed it. It should not have worked, but it did. The people who made this are talented, smart people uh, who know how to create a really good bunch of choreographed dancing that's a there's a lot of choreographed dancing in this with a lot of people and it's really well done i'm no expert on that kind of thing i grew up in michael jackson but uh yeah it's it's pretty amazing that uh what they did so take your time and watch it disney plus all right we're gonna pick tomorrow's video tomorrow's movie or tv show or whatever generate and we get number 254 okay we're in the 200s again, this is sticking within a certain range. Uh, well, actually, maybe not. That was that was 500, so it was the last one, but two, 254, right? Oh, my brain is not working. 254. Come on. Come on. 254. 54. Oh, here you go. It's a movie. It's screen colored in my thing. It's 254 is Ice Age, The Great Eggscapade. The Great Eggscapade. Ice Age. I haven't seen an Ice Age movie in forever, probably since well, the Ice Age, the first Ice Age. I haven't seen, I don't think, I don't know if I saw any of the sequels, but here you go. We're going to watch Ice Age, The Great Eggscapade tomorrow on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge with me. See you then. Bye.